Welcome guys to this another math video. In today's video, we'll be looking at how to solve some basic linear equations. But before we get into that guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done it. Give this video a thumbs up and hit that notification bell to be notified whenever we post new videos. Now, in today's video guys, um, the couple of linear equations that we'll be looking at, they were all retrieved from some of the most recent CSEC class papers. So let's get right into this one. And the first one we want to look at here was the one that was given on the June 2018 paper. And it goes like this. So the instruction is to solve the equation. Now we have 3 halves times y is equal to 12. And 3 halves times y is the same thing as saying 3y divided by 2 is equal to 12. Now the thing about equations guys, if we want to solve this equation, it means that we need to get y on one side of the equal sign by itself. Which means we need to get rid of this 3 and this 2 here. Now to get rid of something, we have to first analyze what it is doing in the equation and then we'll do the opposite of that. Now for example, if we want to get rid of this 2 here, and that's what I'll do first, I'll get rid of this 2 here, I'm dividing by 2. So I'm going to do the opposite of that to get rid of 2, which is to multiply by 2. And if I multiply this side by 2, I must do the same thing to the other side to ensure that both sides remain equal. Or, as they would say, remain balanced. Now here, 2 will cancel 2 here. In truth, it's really 2 into 2 goes 1 time, and 1 times 3y will only leave 3y. But I guess it's easier to look at like this. The 2 cancel the 2 right here. And of course, after that, we'll be left with 3y is equal to 12 times 2, which is 24. Now, the only thing we need to get rid of to make y the subject, and by making y the subject, I mean to get y by itself, is to get rid of this 3 here. So, let's first analyze what this 3 is doing. 3y means that we're multiplying y by 3. So, to get rid of this 3 here, we have to do the opposite of multiplying by 3 which is to divide by 3. And just like the previous step, whatever we do to one side, we must do the same thing to the other side to ensure that both sides remain balanced. And let's see what we'll have here. So 3 into 3 is really 1, but I know you guys prefer to look at it as the 3 will cancel the 3 here. So we're left with y is equal to 3 into 24 goes 8 times. So this is our answer. y is equal to 8. Now looking at the question that was given on the June 2019 paper, and it requires us to solve this equation here. Now this is pretty easy. It might appear to be complex, but it's not so bad. So I'm just going to rewrite this here. So I have 3 divided by the expression 7x minus 1 plus 1 divided by x is equal to 0. Now on the left hand side here, we're adding two algebraic fractions. And recall guys, when we're adding fractions, we need the denominators to be the same before we can advance with the addition. So what I'll do here, I'll use this denominator to multiply both the top and the bottom on this side. So I use this x here to multiply this expression and I keep it in bracket. Right to show that the x is multiplying everything that's in the bracket. And I also multiply the numerator by x as well. Next up, I'll use this denominator now to multiply both the top and bottom on this side. So multiply the bottom by 7x minus 1. And I'll do the same thing for the top as well. 7x minus 1, close bracket. Now let's see what we'll end up with here. So I have 3 times x in the numerator here, which is 3x, is divided by x times 7x minus 1 in bracket here, plus 1 times anything will remain the thing. So 1 times what's in the bracket will remain 7x minus 1 divided by x times 7x minus 1 in bracket, 
and all of this is equal to zero. Now the next thing that we could do guys, instead of writing this as two separate fractions, because both fractions share the same denominator, we could actually combine both fractions. So we'll combine the numerator. So I have 3x plus 7x minus 1. And I'll keep the common denominator here, which is x times 7x minus 1 in bracket. And all of this is equal to 0. Now I'm going to continue on this side here. Now what I'll do now is to simplify the numerators here because we have like terms. So 3x plus 7x, that's the same thing as 10x minus 1 divided by the denominator, which is x times 7x minus 1 in bracket is equal to 0. Now the next thing that we could do here to get rid of the denominator is to multiply both sides by the denominator. Of course, we're dividing by the denominator, so to get rid of it is to multiply both sides by it. So we have x with 7x minus 1 in bracket times 10x minus 1, and we'll do the same thing here. And I keep it in square brackets because we already have a parentheses here, so I keep them in square brackets. And I multiply this side by the same denominator, x, with 7x minus 1 in parentheses there. Now, of course, here, this bracket will cancel this bracket, which will leave us with 10x minus 1 is equal to 0 times anything is 0. So we're left with 0 here. And this looks a whole lot better than what we actually started with, right? So the first thing I'll do here is to get rid of this minus 1. Opposite of minus in 1 is to add 1. If I add 1 to this side, I must do the same thing to the other side to ensure that both sides remain balanced or equal. Now, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So this is gone. And we're left with 10x is equal to 0 plus 1 is 1. And the next thing that we'll do here is to divide both sides by 10. Because we're multiplying by 10, to get rid of the 10, we have to divide both sides by 10. And 10 will cancel 10 here. So we're left with x is equal to 110. And this will be our answer. Now we're at our last question, guys, and this one was given on the January 2020 paper, and they asks us to solve the equation r minus 3 is equal to 3 times r minus 5 in bracket. Now what we can do here is to use the distributive law to expand this bracket here, which means we'll be left with r minus 3 on the left-hand side, and here we'll now have 3 times r, which is 3r, Keep our minus sign here, and then we'll have 3 times 5, which is 15. Now, there are a couple of things that we could do here, right? There's no set way of, of going about um, this aspect of the question, but what I'll do is to minus r from both sides, right? Minus in r is the same thing as minus in 1r. And of course, r from r is 0. If you take something from itself, you'll be left with nothing. Now, all we'll be left with on the left-hand side here is minus 3, which is equal to 3r minus 1r, which is 2r minus 15. And we did that, guys, to group the r's together, right? Now, the next thing that we could do here is to get rid of this minus 15 here. And the opposite of minus in 15 is to add 15, and we have to do it to both sides, of course. Minus 15 plus 15 is 0. So we're left with minus 3 plus 15, which is 12, is equal to 2r. Now we can do the opposite of multiplying by 2 here, which is to divide both sides by 2. And of course, 2 into 2 goes 1 times, and 1r is the same thing as r. 2 into 12 goes 6 times, so therefore r is equal to 6. This is our answer. 
So thank you guys for sticking with me to the end of this one. I hope you guys found this video helpful. And if so, let me know in the comment section below which topic you would love for us to look at next. I'm looking forward to see you guys in our next video. Until then, blessings and peace.